I would just ask you all, when the secretary gives you the lineup, if you would please come and get in line. We have a lot of people that would like to speak today, so we'd like you to be ready, please. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Erica Anderson. I am the proud parent of three children who go to John W. Cook. I am very, very, very concerned about the state of the school my kids attend right now. I'm also concerned about the education because my son has not had a first grade teacher since the semester started. I am a parent who is always at the school. I drop my kids off in the morning. I pick my pre-K up at lunchtime. I pick the rest of my kids up after school. I'm in the school. As a matter of fact, I was there helping out with picture day yesterday because they did not have sufficient people to help to get the kids ready and set up to take pictures. So I am a dedicated parent. I am upset because they also don't have a seventh grade teacher. We don't have a computer teacher. Also, we do not have a special ed teacher, which is special to my heart because I do have a son with special needs. He graduated from John W. Cook last year. And because of his teacher, Mrs. B. Williams, who was at the time the special ed teacher, she got my son grades where they needed to be. He is now in high school on the honor roll. Just last week, his teacher came to me and she said that he is probably ready to be in class with normal students because he is a normal child. He just gets a little hyper. But because of that teacher, she gave him the confidence that he needed to move above. Now, my son is in the first grade. Also, I forgot to mention one thing before I go to that. They don't have a computer teacher. Technology right now is in computers. Ms. Anderson, excuse me, can you I, please I'm conclude? Coming. I, 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 just give me a few more minutes because this is something that needs to be taken care of. The principal, Simone Griffin, promised me that she was gonna get a first grade teacher. Right after, thank God, I talked to Brandon Johnson, uh, C2, CTU organiz, organizer, and he helped to get a letter together. That After that, she comes to me and she says, I have it, I have a grant, I can get a teacher, but it's been a month. We still don't have a teacher. I just want you to feel like if you were in the first grade or if you had a child in the first grade and every day you want to see what is your child doing Thank and you, you have Anderson. a different teacher to talk to every day, Ms. no one is communicating. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. The board, Ms. the board has gotten letters and Ms. they have done nothing about it. Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Uh, Barbara, do you have somebody that can talk to her? Uh, members of the board, um, I'm asking if the parent would Please, um, Ms. Little, our chief, so that we can follow up and make sure that the information is accurate and that the resources that the children need are there. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next speaker then is Speaker 12, Michelle Magruder. Good morning, Chicago board members. My name is Michelle Magruder. I am a parent from James Ward world language school and I am accompanied by other parents whose children attend the school. As parents of James Ward world language school, we join you in your goal to educate, inspire, and transform our children. James Ward School was built in 1875, is a landmark for being Chicago's oldest school building in, the, in use as a school. Our school has a rich and accomplished history. We want our school to remain amongst the top three in the district for perfect attendance. We want to continue to have children winning the Oppenheimer Award for Music Instruments, teachers winning the Silver Award for the Teachers for Healthy School Program, and our principal winning the Principal Scholar Award. Today we submit to you a thousand signature petition that accompanies an itemized list for urgent requests for school furniture, air conditioners, and building repairs. We are tremendously concerned about the school being safe and its environment being conducive for optimal learning experiences. We are in need of air conditioners, student staff, parent volunteers, 
and visitors are faced with sweltering conditions in classrooms and hallways. Regrettably, the lights are turned off in hallways and freestanding fans are placed in classrooms in hopes to cool off the rooms. This poses a significant safety risk as our students are forced to walk through dark halls and around potentially dangerous freestanding fans. Ms. Magruder, excuse me, can you please conclude? To address our concern, we need air conditioners. Um, we are in desperate need of student chairs. There aren't enough to accommodate our students. Many of them are old, wobbly, poor, poor condition. In addition, we have flooding in our basement and it, it poses a, a serious safety issue as the flooding occurs in high traffic walkaway. It needs to be addressed Thank as you, soon Ms. as possible. Thank, thank you, Ms. Wet. Ms. Ward, we'll, uh, I'll, uh, Barbara, Excuse me. Could you have somebody give us a report on the condition of the school? Yeah, would you, you please have facilities? We'll have somebody look into this. Thank you. We look forward to your quick approval and push to speedily resolve these urgent matters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Thank you. Our next speaker, Mr. President, is speaker number 15, Matthew Luskin, followed by speaker number 17, Ralph Faulkner, and then we'll have speaker number 19, Noreen Gudenkost, followed by speaker 21, Catherine Myers, and speaker 38, Laura Morgan. Hi, my name is Matthew Luskin. I'm a CPS parent and an organizer with the Chicago Teachers Union. I'm a parent. I'm lucky to be a parent at two truly great Chicago public schools where I'm you know, just incredibly appreciative of the tremendous staff and, and teachers that educate and care for my sons. But I want to raise serious concerns about CPS communications to parents on a variety of issues. Um, at a time when this board has announced repeatedly that it wants to improve relations and trust with communities that, you know, frankly, our statements coming from this board and from CPS seem to regularly be treated as short-term PR stunts rather than long-term commitments to our communities. We're seeing this at my own school where weeks after announcing that CPS would respond to the desire of parents and the advice of educators and restrict the number of standardized tests in the system, teachers informed us that, in fact, a numerous new tests were being rolled out, adding up to as many as eight minimum tests for students as, as young as preschool right now in the system. We're seeing it in the 26th Ward right now where President Vitale, I was here at the meeting where you promised Ames parents that there was no plan to turn their school into a military school and in fact literally told them you do not need to keep coming back here. Word for word, told them that. Yet the mayor and Alderman Maldonado turned the, the president of this board into a liar when they held a, a press release announcing exactly the plan that those parents were concerned about. On the other end of the 26th Ward where Lafayette parents fought against school closings and were promised repeatedly that charter schools were not going into the closed buildings, we're now seeing an announcement that Chicago, uh, ch the Chicago School for the Arts, a charter school, is being moved in there. And the only response from the Board of Education is that technically that's a contract charter school, so that doesn't count as a violation of our promise. The Board of Education patted itself on the back and parents were relieved when it was announced that we would be spared the traditional 20th day cuts after massive cuts that happened at the beginning of the year. Mr. Luskin, excuse but, me, can you please conclude? But two weeks ago, there were additional layoffs. So I want to introduce you guys to Cindy Alvarez, a parent at Yates Elementary School, and Nana Moon, who until two weeks ago was a second grade teacher at Yates. The decision to remove additional staff, often staff treating our most vulnerable students, placed all second grade IEPs into a single classroom at Yates. It forced the school to have two separate thank you, second Mr. and Luskin. third grade split classes. Mr. Luskin, so, thank special you. Special ed students Our are not receiving speaker, the pullout please. services they need. So we would ask you guys to follow through the, on this commitment to parents and meet with the Yates community and talk about how to address this. Thank it's you, Mr. Luskin. Luskin. Our next speaker, happy. please, will be Alderman O'Connor. Mr. President, if I may say before the next speaker approaches, we have Alderman O'Connor with us from the 41st Ward, please. Good afternoon. Uh, President Vitale, members of the Board of Education, and Dr. Bird Bennett. Hi, how are you? <laughs> On behalf of the students and the residents of the 41st Ward, I'd like to thank you for working with us to address the overcrowding. As you know, the 41st Ward is home to amazing neighborhood schools. Schools that are successful because of the communities and families that have embraced and supported them. Thank you for supporting our schools, especially today as the Oriole Park and Wildwood Annex projects advance. 
Please know we are grateful for your efforts and commitment to our children. And I just came today to thank you, and I wanted to wish you all a happy and safe holiday season and tell you I'll be back next year for my new wish list. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Thanks for coming thank by. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next speaker then, please, Ralph Fockler. Uh, my name is Ralph Fockler. Principals and special education teachers are obligated to create instructional schedules compliant with minutes of instruction mandated by the states of Illinois. This is not always easy to do, as evidenced by recent schools being ordered to reconstruct their instructional schedules that were found to be non-compliant. At the root of this problem is various constraints inherent to instructional scheduling. Withstanding, special education teachers have additional constraints. They must create unique student schedules that often must be synchronized with the school general uh, schedule. Such constraints, can be con such constraints can make compliance much more difficult for special education teachers. One solution is to avoid constructing IEPs that will lead to scheduling difficulties. However, such solutions are driven by bureaucratic scheduling and not by the child's skill level. Another solution, which is not really a solution, is to abandon the time component of the child's IEP when it appears to be impossible to achieve. However, obscured among the voluminous non-compliant schedules is often one that is compliant. I have a computer program that can create compliant schedules with relative ease. In addition to compliant schedules, this program, one, creates personnel schedules that identify where classroom personnel are stationed at a quick glance. It, two, it creates normalized, uh, it creates student normalized progress report as well as criteria reference reports. <coughs> and three, it creates uh, individualized student lesson plans required a special Mr. education. Mr. Fackler, excuse me, can you please conclude? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, and specialized homeroom teachers. These reports are produced with the greatest of ease. I ask that you consider making this program available to CBS uh, principals and uh, uh, teachers. Um, I've been a long time teacher, uh, 40 years, nearly 40 years. My wife is, a, is about to retire and uh, the, our collective experience tells us that teachers and, and uh, uh, principals need this program. Thank so you, I, Mr. I'd like to demonstrate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fackler. Our next speaker, please. Speaker number 19, Noreen Goodenkast. Last call. Moving on to speaker 21, please, Catherine Myers. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Catherine Myers, and I'm the lead founder of Great Lakes Academy Charter School. Um, and I'm here to introduce myself and the school to you today. Uh, we are a proposed charter school that is very excited to be participating in the authorization process with CPS. Um, our mission is to prepare all of our students with the fundamental academic skills, critical thinking ability, and strength of character to excel in high school, college, and a career of their choice. We empower all of our students with the education today that they will need to change the world tomorrow. The area we propose to open in, Greater South Shore, the southeast side of Chicago, has a deep need for a high-performing elementary school option for local families. Um, we've provided a handout to the board with some facts. 49% um, of local children are leaving the community to attend school elsewhere. Since early 2013, we've been working in the South Shore. We've attended dozens of, did I lose this? Oh, dozens of community meetings, had dozens of meetings with residents and community leaders, and had held um, over a dozen events of our own to continue to network with folks in the community and get to know people better. Every founding board member serving for Great Lakes Academy has spent hours meeting with residents and becoming familiar with the area. Several founding board members um, formed a community outreach committee populated jointly with local residents and founding board members to continue to spread the word and partner with community members. We have a deep belief in grassroots support, in speaking, um, having individual conversations with community members. We've collected 1,500 signatures of support from local residents as a result of one-on-one -on -one conversations about the school and educational needs for families in the area. Ms. We've Myers, excuse me, can you please conclude? Sure. Thank you. Uh, we've collected 117 intent to enroll uh, petitions and 65 businesses have signed on in support. 
on a strong demonstration of our grassroots support. Um, Laura Morgan, a community member, uh, was here to speak with us about the importance of um, bringing Great Lakes Academy to South Shore and our social emotional learning component. Unfortunately, she had to leave uh, for a prior commitment about 15 minutes ago, and I promised her that I would uh, say that on her behalf. Thank so you. So thank you very much. We look forward to participating in the process. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. So our next speaker then will be speaker number 22, P Queen's sister, followed by speaker 23, Michelle Villegas, followed by speaker 24, Kenyatta Holmes, speaker 25, Karen Tolbert. Last call for Queen's sister. Last call for Michelle Villegas. Hello to the members of the Board of Education and CPS. My name is Michelle Villegas, and I meant to speak today on the unfair application of the master plan to different schools in CPS, but given the announcement of Lincoln School last Monday, I have changed my speech. How are CPS, the city of Chicago, and the state of Illinois so far in debt? Have they planned so poorly that CPS has closed 50 schools last year, and are they failing a shocking number of children? One need only look at the $20 million annex given to Lincoln Elementary School last Monday. It is a perfect example of what is wrong with CPS, Chicago, and the state of Illinois. It is inequitable and illogical. The extreme solution that CPS now proposes is that Lincoln will nearly double its capacity while eliminating its playground. This option was considered so egregious that it was rejected outright by the previous LSC less than two years ago and was not discussed publicly by the current LSC for fear of overwhelming opposition. There are no petition signatures to put the playground, to put the addition over a playground. This deplorable solution was contorted to accomplish one goal, and that was to ensure that addresses of an entitled few at the furthest distance from Lincoln School remain permanently in Lincoln's district. The community is now forced to lose the playground and accept a rooftop play cage that is inaccessible to children after school, on weekends, and in the summer. This was a deceptive backroom deal with no transparency, no public input, and no com community me meetings. Michelle Ms. Smith Villegas, refused to, to speak. Ms. Villegas, excuse me, can you please conclude? About plans for Lincoln at, at our community organizations and citizens have been shut out of the process. As a result, taxpayers will spend nearly $20 million doubling the population of a small school with an even smaller footprint while eliminating the playground for 1,000 school children for the next 100 years. Thank you, Ms. And you are not, you have not negotiated and met with the community. You have met with a narrow Thank band you, of Villegas. LSC Our members. Thank you, members. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Kenyatta Holmes. Good afternoon, CPS Board of Education and CEO, CEO Barbara Bird Bennett. I am a proud parent and I am here in support of the proposed ITW Noble Campus. I choose Noble because it's right. I thank God for Noble. It's time for a big change in our community for our children. I have seen personally what Noble can do. My oldest child graduated in June 2013 and is now a freshman at Western Illinois University. Awesome. My second child is a sophomore with a learning disability and a speech impairment, an IEP. I love Noble's policy and discipline. I always tell my daughters, rules have to be followed to be successful in life. And also, especially the way they motivate and educate every student. School started on August 26. My daughter has not missed a day, even though she has to travel on the bus and walk four blocks out of our neighborhood. She looks forward to going to school each day. On her report card, she has four A's, two B's, and a C in honors chemistry. She is not bullied by her peers or treated different different by anyone because of her learning disability. Overall, she is very happy. Here are two of my daughter's favorite quotes. Number one, 
We are human. Therefore, nothing human can be alien to us. Maya Angelou. Second quote. I am a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. Thomas Jefferson. One of my favorite quotes. Ms. Tolbert. Mom. Ms. Tolbert, excuse me, can you please conclude? Mom, I am treated like every student without a learning disability at school. I am on the same level by teachers making learning fun. I love school. I am going to graduate from college and become successful in life. Autumn Holmes, my daughter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. <clears throat> Thank you. Our next speaker, please, Karen Tolbert. Good afternoon. My name is Karen Tolbert. I'm the president and CEO of Multiple Business Systems. We're a proud CPS vendor. We've been so for the last 10 years. And I'd like to talk to you today about classroom technology. I am very happy to see that there was an RFP released for whiteboards and that you are focused on um, technology now. I want to um, share with you the importance of having um, technology that's implemented that's so expensive for the schools managed, engaged to be sure that there are some proficiencies being gained at certain uh, levels for the teachers so that the money that is spent is being spent wisely and used wisely. As a vendor, I see um, lots of products that have been purchased that aren't being used because they haven't received, the teachers and principals haven't received the training that they need to be successful, and they're discouraged, and so they don't work with the technology, but the technology is so awesome for them, and it is, um, your role as the board and our role as a vendor to partner together to be certain that uh, they reach the students because that is the goal. You're, you you want to inspire and transform education. That is the same goal that we have. And I'd like to also um, talk about non-biddable items to be sure that as a vendor, we are still allowed to listen to the principal's choice and be chosen if that's indeed their choice and that we're not squeezed out as a small MBEWE business. So I ask the question if the board will continue to allow. Ms. Tolbert, excuse me, can you please conclude? I'm not sure who said that, so I don't know which way to look, but yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm asking the board, will small businesses still be able to do business with schools if principals choose them even though there is a strategic source vendor in place. Because we've been working with the schools uh, constantly for the past three years, and we're making progress, and I would not want to be eliminated. Uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Tolbert. You know, we have purchasing rules, and to the best of my knowledge, they're unchanged. So thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Our next speaker then will be speaker number 26, Eve Angel Yanubian, followed by speaker 27, Gloria Delgado, and then speaker number 29, Jackson Potter, followed by speaker number 32, Michael Federico, please. Good afternoon. I invite all of you to kick the K word habit. A kid is an animal beast with four legs. A child is a human being person with two legs. And the children have an inalienable right to a gender identity of boys and girls, males and females, and be in the image and likeness of a creator and honor, and that commands them to honor their mothers and fathers. Yesterday, Illinois citizens celebrated a, uh, an important anniversary, the Gettysburg Address. December 18th will mark the 148th anniversary of the signing of the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery in America and throughout its territory except when you are convicted of a crime and become a recycled slave through incarceration. As, a crime, as crimes against humanity, descendants, and survivors of unjust laws of segregation, Jim Crow genocide with uh, a member of the subjugated race, Inspired by the film 12 Years a Slave, seeks support for a four-part call to action initiative for President Barack Obama to, number one, execute an executive order 
for a national observance of December 18th by placing a red, black, and green wreath at the White House lawn as a symbolic gesture. Two, have the mayor of New York pour a libation at the Statue of Liberty for millions of black souls thrown in the ocean without ritual. Three, encourage the government, corporations, and everyone of diverse backgrounds to buy from a black business or a black person on that day to show cultural respect for 246 years of free labor by force and crimes against humanity. Finally, make the 1853 book, 12 Years of Slave by Solomon Northrop and the 1967 Kerner Report uh, required reading in all schools receiving federal funds in holes or in part. Mr. As Nubian, Mr. Thank, Nubian, thank you. Thank you, as uh, uh, to promote citizenship and civic development. My question, do you um, think December 18th could help our children develop citizenship and a better understanding in civics and to- Thank you, Mr. Nubian. Thank you. Our next speaker, please, Gloria Delgado. Good afternoon, CPS Board of Education and CEO Barbara Bird Bennett. My name is Gloria Delgado, and I'm a proud graduate of Noble. I'm the oldest of four in my family and the first to go to college. Years ago, when I was in eighth grade, I recall my parents discussing various neighborhood high schools I can attend. I had visited my neighborhood schools and in search of a safe education and in search of a safe educational environment, that's when I found Noble. I found not only a safe environment, but I found a high quality education. Noble helped prepare me for college. In my sophomore year, I was given the opportunity to participate in Summer of a Lifetime program at the University of Arizona and studied English for six weeks. It was at this program where I gained the confidence to go to college. At Noble, I attended a school where every single teacher wanted and expected all students to be successful. They provided all the tools necessary for success, even if it meant staying after school to master a math problem, a lesson plan, a science project, or even a college application. Noble taught me how to achieve my goals. I'm currently a senior at North Park University. My sister Denise is a sophomore at, Univer at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And my youngest sister, Melissa, is currently at a Noble campus. I know, and more importantly, they know they will not only go to college, but they would graduate. Together, my siblings and I are accomplishing many goals that my parents were never able to achieve. I chose to speak today because it's unfortunate to hear the people who oppose an education that has changed my life, changed my families, and currently changing the lives of 9,000 students. I hope we continue to put many, glo many Glorias, Denises, and Melissas of the world first and continue to offer parents a high quality options. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Delgado. Our next speaker, please, Jackson Potter. <laughs> 